Defiance TV series. Defiance is an American science fiction television series developed by Rockness O'Bannon, Kevin Murphy, and Michael Taylor. The series is produced by Universal Cable Productions, in transmedia collaboration with Tryon Worlds, who have released an MMORPG video game of the same name which is tied into the series. The show takes place in the future on a radically transformed Earth containing new species, some having arrived from space, many others the result of contamination by terraforming technology which has transformed native flora and fauna in unforeseen ways. Joshua Nolan, Grant Bowler, works as the lawman for the town of Defiance, a community where humans and intelligent extraterrestrial species coexist. The show follows Nolan, his adopted alien daughter Ariza, Stephanie Leonidas, and the town's new mayor, Amanda Rosewater, Julie Benz. The series is broadcast in the United States on the cable channel Sci-Fi and in various international markets. It premiered on April 15, 2013, in the United States and that same week in most countries that picked up the series. On May 10, 2013, Sci-Fi renewed the series for a 13-episode second season to premiere June 19, 2014. Summary the story begins in the year 2046, Earth has been radically transformed, causing changes in topography, the extinction of plant and animal species, and the emergence of new species. The series follows Joshua Nolan, Grant Bowler, and his adopted Irathian daughter Ariza, Stephanie Leonidas, who have put down roots in Defiance, a city-state community where humans and several extraterrestrial races, collectively known as Votans, coexist over the partially rebuilt ruins of St. Louis. Cast Main cast Grant Bowler as Joshua Nolan, a former Marine and the chief lawkeeper of Defiance, Julie Benz as Amanda Rose Water, the mayor of Defiance, Stephanie Leonidas as Ariza Nira, an Irathian warrior who is Nolan's adopted daughter and deputy lawkeeper, Tony Khan as Dartukta, an ambitious Castathan businessman, Jaime Murray as Starmata, Dartuk's wife, also a Castathan, a cunning Lady Macbeth figure, Graham Green as Rafe McCauley, the owner and operator of the largest mine in the territory, Mia Kirshner as Kenya Rosewater, Amanda's sister, the self-assured, dauntless proprietress prostitute of need want, Defiance's bar brothel gambling hall. Recurring cast Dusan Williams as Tommy Lasall, Deputy Lawkeeper in Defiance, Trena Keating as Doc Y.E.W.L.L., Defiance's sarcastic doctor and technical genius, an indigen with a sordid past, Justin Rain as Quentin McCauley, Rafe's second son, Jesse Rath as Alec Tarr, Dartuk and Starm as Castathan's son who has fallen in love with Rafe's daughter, Christy. He is the DJ of the Raider radio show, broadcast from the Gateway Arches Observation Area. Nicole Munoz as Christy Tarr, Nay McCauley, Rafe's daughter, a waitress, wife of Alec, Fiona Flanagan as Nicolette Nikki Ryodin, the previous mayor, Amanda's trusted mentor and arguably the main antagonist of season one, Gail Harold as Connor Lang, Earth Republic representative and former love interest of Amanda, Noah Danby as Suka, Irathian and leader of the Spirit Riders, Shio Horn as Rin, Irathian and member of the Spirit Riders. Stephen McCarthy as Mr. Birch, Nicky's immoral associate, Wesley French as Luke McCauley, Rafe's older son. Setting The series is set in the near future, where aliens, known collectively as Votans, have come to Earth seeking a new home after their star system was destroyed in a stellar collision. When the Votans left their solar system 5,000 years ago, their instruments detected no signs of technology on Earth so they thought Earth was uninhabited. Upon their arrival in 2013, they discovered otherwise. The humans responded to them with hostility and suspicion. A limited number of Votans were allowed to settle in a colony in Brazil, and eventually in three other colonies, but millions of Votans remained in hypersleep aboard their ships in orbit around the Earth, as negotiations dragged on with Earth governments to establish a full-scale settlement. Tensions rose for ten years, but the Votan and human governments were on the verge of negotiating a peaceful settlement, 
when in 2023 the vote an ambassador to the United Nations was assassinated by a disgruntled human supremacist on live television outside of the United Nations headquarters in New York City. This sparked a disastrous global conflict between humans and the aliens, known as the Pale Wars. The wars tore apart the planet for seven years, until their culmination in 2030 in the apocalyptic Arcfall event, when the Ark fleet in orbit mysteriously exploded. The aliens think a rogue human commander was responsible, while humans suspect it was an alien weapons experiment gone wrong. Millions of Votans died. During the Arcfall, destroyed Arcs rained down on Earth and accidentally released terraformer technology. While the Votans had intended to use their terraforming technology in a carefully planned manner, the Arcfall haphazardly unleashed chaotic and radical changes to the biosphere and even the geology of Earth, making the planet dangerous to both humans and the aliens. The Earth was scorched, chasms opened in the ground, new mountain ranges were raised, and the surface of the planet was covered with dust and debris. Animal and plant species from the Votan star system were introduced to Earth and both native and alien animal species were horribly mutated by the uncontrolled terraforming technology, creating bizarre and dangerous hybrids and new species. Within a few months, the Pale Wars wound down as both sides had fought to the point of mutual exhaustion, and a ceasefire was declared. Few organized governments remained for either the humans or the aliens, and both sides factionalized as their respective members began looking out for themselves. In several areas, Local human and Votan militias began to band together when they realized that they had to cooperate if they hoped to survive on this new, almost alien planet. The debris from the destroyed Ark fleet now forms an artificial Ark belt in Earth orbit, which periodically rains down in small-scale Arcfalls, which present a hazard for survivors on the surface, but also provide valuable opportunities to salvage advanced technology aboard the Arcs. More frequently, most of the debris breaks up on re-entry into shards of metal shrapnel, a dangerous phenomenon known as razor rain. Electromagnetic distortion created by the malfunctioning terraformers have rendered most long-distance communication and air transit impossible, isolating far-flung regions much as they would have been isolated in the 19th century. Low-flying aircraft such as helicopters are still safe to fly, and will still function but high-altitude long-distance flights are too dangerous. Neither the humans nor the Votans are capable of launching vehicles into Earth's orbit anymore, as it is not only dangerous, but prohibitively expensive for societies that only just managed to pull themselves back from complete collapse. Fifteen years after the armistice, a new proposed Maglev train line is being built with the goal of re-establishing regular transit between the Pacific and Atlantic coasts of North America. Short-range radio stations will still function within the localized area of a town, as will personal smartphone-like devices known as hailers, but otherwise, the disruption of long-range telecommunications means that information must be sent between different regions by courier. At best, an unreliable method known as text relay can be used, in which local radio stations rebroadcast a message received from a neighboring station to reach other regions of the continent but this can take days or weeks. In 2046, 15 years after the armistice, both humans and Votans struggle to rebuild on this shattered world. In the Western Hemisphere, the Votanese collective controls much of Central and South America, while the new unified Earth Republic has a major foothold in the populous cities of northeastern North America, now reorganized as a territorial unit known as Columbia, a combination of the United States Boston to Washington megalopolis and Canada's Quebec City Windsor Corridor, along with the Canadian Maritime Provinces, with its capital being in New York City. Otherwise, much of North America remains a badlands region, a new frontier slowly being recolonized by several small independent republics and city states. One such community is the independent city state of Defiance, located in the heart of the continent built over the ruins of St. Louis, Missouri. Alien Races Bodan Races Castithans The Castithans are an aristocratic and ethereal race from the planet Darabo. Known for their pale skin and beautiful features, 
they the cunning intelligence and unbridled ambition that helped them adapt to life on Earth. Very conservative in many aspects of life, including politics and a rigid caste system, Castathans are very liberal with sexuality. Though not officially confirmed, it's been heavily suggested that Castathans can produce viable offspring with humans. Irathians Irathians are the most common Votan race living on Earth, hailing from the planet Irath. Other races, including humans, often view them as feral due to their tribal nature and love of the natural world. Irathian appearance is deep red hair, highly athletic and bronze skin covered in biologically occurring patterns. While they're quite able to succeed at any occupation, most Irathian prefer to be farmers in order to honor their forefathers. Irathians are able to produce viable offspring with humans. Indogenes Indigens tend to be slender, bald, with geometrically patterned skin of a solid color, most often pure white, who augment their bodies with a variety of cybernetic implants specifically designed for their chosen profession. They revere science and knowledge above all, allowing them to have invented most of the technology used by the other alien races. Sensoth The Sensoth physically resemble apes and giant sloths, being fur-covered, and originated in a specific region of Irath. They have many of the Earth's sloth-like characteristics, speaking and acting quite slowly. They have great physical strength and imposing presence, they can be intimidating to many, despite almost always having kind personalities. This strength of body leads to many of them being hard laborers, more often than not in the employ of a castathan. Liberata The Liberata are physically short and stocky with thick hair around their head and face, resembling a gnome in many respects. Despite their name, they often fill the role of servant to the other races, performing the menial tasks and labors. They are looked down on by other Votan races due to the past greed and avarice of the Liberata. Gulani the Gulani are the biggest mystery of the Votan races. Many believe they are pure energy or just a large ball of light, however this is just the perception emitted from their encapsulation suits, suits required to sustain Gulani life. There are very few Gulani on terraformed Earth as most Gulani stayed on their home Gula, confident they'd survive the destruction of the Votanese system. Most other races know very little about the Gulani as relationships between them are quite recent. Other non-human races Volge The Volge are feared by humans and Votans alike for their warmongering attitude. From an unknown planet in the galaxy the Volge conquered the planet Elmk, the Volge stand over 8 feet tall and always wear their armor, due to their inability to tolerate oxygen. During the Votan exodus, the other races all chose to leave the Volge behind, their appearance during the Pale Wars was a surprise to all. They are seldom seen since the armistice, having retreated to underground caves. Hellbugs The Hellbugs are a once harmless insect race from the Votanese system that were mutated during the terraform. They are vicious predators who live in large collectives. They have a very similar hierarchy to ants or bees, headed by a matron who commands over warriors, archers, skittlings, and monarchs. While very dangerous and always posing a threat to sentient life, they are not eradicated as they produce the most valuable energy source on Earth, gulanite. Biomen While technically not alien, the biomen are often considered such due to their inability to integrate effectively into communities, stigmatized by both humans and Votan. They originated from Old Earth during the early Votan Wars, commissioned by a military project to combat potential alien threats. Biomen are tall and very well muscled, coming in a range of colors and skin tones, but always with a batch number branded across their chest. All biomen have an off switch somewhere in their bodies. If hit with enough force, they will be rendered unconscious. Several thousands volts of electricity will wake them up. Now effectively useless due to the armistice. They still suffer from the rage built into their persona and need to be given a focused outlet. Development and production In June 2011, 
Sci-Fi announced that they would be producing a television series which was being developed by Rockness O'Bannon and would be produced by Universal Cable Productions. It was also announced that the TV series would be connected to a video game being produced by Tryon Worlds. It was later confirmed that Sci-Fi had ordered 13 episodes for the show's first season, which would premiere in either late 2012 or the summer of 2013. In July 2012, the network announced that the series and game would debut in April 2013. Casting announcements began in January 2012, with Grant Bowler being the first to be cast. Bowler plays Joshua Nolan, the law keeper in a bustling frontier boomtown that is one of the new world's few oases of civility and inclusion. On February 8, TVWISE revealed profiles for five of the main characters. It was later reported that Gillian Anderson had been briefly considered by the show's producers to play either Amanda or Starmer. However, that casting did not move forward as they assumed she would not be interested in returning to episodic television. On March 8, 2012, it was announced that Julie Benz, Stephanie Leonidas, Tony Curran and Jaime Murray had been cast in the series. Julie Benz plays Amanda Rosewater, the mayor of Defiance. Stephanie Leonidas plays Iriza, a beautiful warrior who is part of an alien race called the Irathians. Tony Curran plays Dartukta, the right hand to Amanda. And Jaime Murray plays Starmata, Dartuk's beautiful and proper wife. Production of the first season began in April 2012 in Toronto. As of season one, linguist David J. Peterson has developed two full languages for the different alien races, for the Castithans and the Irathians. Basic language sketches also exist for two of the other races, the Indigens and the Liberata. On May 10, 2013, Sci-Fi renewed Defiance for a 13-episode second season to air starting in June 2014 with production from August to December 2013. Music on Defiance Defiance's score, for both the series and the game, was assigned to Bear McCreary. Bear said that he had to be sure that each version, for the series and the game, had its own unique characteristics, suited to its needs, but also that musical threads united the franchise. He also stated that scoring a project like Defiance was a rare situation for a composer. Heavy synths and ethnic soloists played a key role in defining the sound of Defiance, but the cinematic quality came from working with a string orchestra. I was asked to help bring the alien cultures to life by developing a distinct musical heritage for each. I fashioned Votan instrumentation and lyrics into a variety of popular songs and ceremonial pieces. I wrote pieces for street musicians that float through open-air marketplaces. I produced alien classical music, jingles, jazz, rock anthems and torch songs. Broadcast Defiance was aired in multiple countries around the world without much delay, atypical of global syndication norms. The series premiered on April 15, 2013, in the US on Sci-Fi and Canada on Showcase. The show also premiered in the United Kingdom and Ireland on Sci-Fi, in France on Sci-Fi France and in Germany on Sci-Fi Germany on April 16, 2013. In Australia, the pay TV premiere was on April 18, 2013, on SF, now Sci-Fi Australia, while the free-to-air premiere was almost a year later on February 12, 2014, on The Seven Network. Reception Critical reception of Defiance has been mixed or average according to Metacritic, with a 57% rating according to 17 reviews. Maureen Ryan of the Huffington Post called it a smart, well-crafted TV show with a good cast and an adventurous flavor, and added it's also indisputably science fiction, which is a relief, saying that she felt too many science fiction shows were watered down. Genre light dramas. She also praised the casting performances and the production design. Ellen Gray of the Philadelphia Daily News noted that the TV show may not break new ground, but it does stand on its own as a watchable sci-fi series, with a Wild West vibe mixed with a bit of Fascape meets West Side Story. Conversely, David Hinckley of the New York Daily News gave it one star out of five and found it to be incomprehensible, but said if you're a sci-fi fan for whom this stuff can never be too complex, have at it.
Other reviewers gave Defiance average reviews and noted its similarity to previous television series, while at the same time praising its breathtaking landscapes and impressively rendered monsters. Its intriguing cast and setting. Its digital effects and performances. And its mythology and interesting story.